Hey guys, the group stage is over and right now we're going to have some words with English analytics panel Casta, Kyle. Hello Kyle, how are you doing? I'm all right. Actually, yeah, that's not so true. I need a nap, but I'm fine. <laughs> did you sleep well? Not, uh, not as long as I should have. How much did you sleep? Uh, maybe six hours. Oh. But I've been operating on less for a few days. Mm -hmm. I got, fell for the the sucker's bet, you know? Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go sleep. No, no, no. Hang out, have a, have a drink, come on, one drink. Yeah, that's always happens. In it's Russia. Centers. Yeah. It's never worked. Of course. You can't do anything else. Uh, so, I would like to start with addressing the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Your kick from complexity. Yeah. Uh, you've been playing there since 2014 for nearly 1300 days, mm -hmm. right after you switched from Han to Dota. Uh, as we've been told, as an audience, the, the reason behind that is that you miscommunicated with the team. Sure. Okay, <laughs> okay. so um, how did you guys break up? On what terms? Oh, I mean, <laughs> you'd have to ask them about that. <laughs> I, um, okay, tell your reasons, tell your feelings. I was the guy that got kicked, I don't have feelings, you know? It's just do your best, uh, accept the situation, move on. Uh -huh. Your brother is still playing, playing there, Zach. Mm -hmm. um, do you root for the guys? I root for some of the guys. Okay, that's okay. Um, you've, been, uh, you've been the kind of person that hates Tekis pretty much. Mm -hmm. You think he's no fun to play, he ruins the game. Yet, mm -hmm. <coughs> because of your brother, mm -hmm. Complexity was the first team that picked Tekis on the tournament and they failed. Don't you think there's still a possibility that Techies might be fun with Teeny maybe or Pudge in professional plays. I hope not. <laughs> Why so? It's just anti. It's against the spirit of the game. That's why I don't like it. I'm sure if someone can make it work, it's fine. But it's a gimmick. Mm -hmm. It's um. It's like how I feel when I watch James Harden play basketball. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, successful. Eventually, mm -hmm. you know, theoretically successful. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's just gross. Okay, then. And what do you think about the meta? This patch? Uh, do you like it? Do you enjoy it? You still play the game. You have a feeling about that. You yeah. have a, your opinion. Well, the only thing I'm not a huge fan of is that the game changes so rapidly. There isn't really time to figure out like the meta. Mm -hmm. uh, Sunbi, coach for Secret, wrote a blog about this maybe six months ago that I really agreed with, discussing how like even at TI, this past TI, the game wasn't still fully fleshed out or figured out yet. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's changed drastically. Um, we have these more frequent patches, but instead of focusing on like small tweaks to talents, mm -hmm. to uh, numbers, cooldowns, you know, little, little things, we're getting drastic changes to the math of Dota. Like status resistance, as an example, mm -hmm. which is like now somewhat gone, really messed with your intuitive like muscle memory for Dota mm -hmm. 2. If you would yule someone and stun them, you would be wrong, okay? Mm -hmm. and now that status resist is gone, I'm like too late on my stun, like yeah. half the time. And you have to relearn this to yourself. Same with, you know, little things like bounty runes give, the first it's like scaling XP, now it's no XP. Big changes come around, but they don't actually impact the game in mm -hmm. the way that others would, i.e. denies being so brutal and crushing in games. I think that's a big part of the reason Wild VP is amazing. Mm -hmm. They've always kind of ran the same style and they've never been like this successful with it, but mm -hmm. of all teams, they've really worked out a formula to win games. And I think a huge part of that is that they're some of the most talented players in the laning phase and they abuse that to just get huge advantages and win games. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are any over and underrated heroes right now? Mm, I think Lesh, my big three coming in were Lesh, Fury, and Earthshaker. Mm -hmm. And certain teams are like starting to just first two of those heroes. Um, overrated. I think CK is a bit underrated too. Mm -hmm. I think that can actually be used as a four as well. I think it's quite good at that in truth. I think Viper could be a bit overrated. SF's underrated. I think DP is overrated for mm -hmm. that reason because there's certain heroes like that hero died in NA because if you were to take DP, someone's immediately going to go like AA or. Um, or SF, and mm -hmm. you just can't really play the game anymore. It's very uh, reliant on being ahead, and that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of difficult when you consider the hero's kit and how difficult it is for her to push waves early on. 
Okay, I know you're a big sports fan, not only esports, but physical sports as well. And you play a lot of um, sports simulators. Like what? What do you play? Um, I mean, I don't really play them that much nowadays, to be completely honest. I'd rather do the real thing if I have the time. Mm -hmm. But um, when I was growing up, like throughout high school and then like my first job, I got uh, into FIFA. Mm -hmm. and I used to play 2K every night, especially during like NBA playoffs. You know, you'd, you'd wanna, you always want to play the <laughs> sport game, mm -hmm. of the sport that you're currently into. Um, I kick probably anybody ass, anybody's ass here at Madden, but that's just due to the fact that I'm American. And yeah, that's most just people, Madden. Yeah, they're just like, football? What do, you, what do you mean? We have FIFA. Yeah. Here in Russia, since last year, I guess, we have a national uh, FIFA Cup that may allow you to go into international cup. Do you have something national in USA concerning these uh, sports simulators? I think so. Would you want to try to play competitively? Oh, God, no. You don't think it's... I'm uh, over it. You don't think it's nah, a great Dota's way. the last game for me, man. Yeah. <laughs> unless, unless, uh, unless Artifact is like some good shit, and uh -huh. being a Dota player gives me like a significant advantage, because that'd be the dream, right? Just imagine you, like, the, you'd be a tr I'd be a true athlete, just like leaning back. <laughs> oh, I won the LAN. There you go. <laughs> like, or I won to the LAN. Now I go hang out. I'd have only myself to worry about. Like, shh, easy, but. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play a sport game, I don't think. It's just Dota or Bust for me. And then uh -huh. after that, probably something in real life. <laughs> Have you played Hearthstone then? Yep. And you kind of enjoy this type of games? Because Artifact is, well, it's a cardboard game. Mm. I used to do, I was big into trading card games when I was a kid. Like mm -hmm. growing up, I went through all the phases, you know? It's like nine, eight, mm -hmm. all into Pokemon cards. Yeah. And got some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They got Magic the Gathering. Then I hit puberty. Had to go to public school. Okay, how does public my school? Funds, my the, my soul died, and trading card games were lost forever. Why is that? Can you explain? What? Uh, how did the public school kill your soul? Oh, jeez, man. I a huge problem in the American education system is just how fucking early everything starts. There's uh -huh. no way that you should have kids waking up at like 6 a.m., 6:30 a.m. every day to take some bus to school that starts at 7:30 and ends, by the time you're home, it's like 3.30, 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. you, you, kids need more sleep than, uh, than adults, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, that, that's just, that's one thing, but it's more just, I can go to the greatest school and it doesn't, you're not being taught how to think, mm -hmm. uh, how to sort of mull over an idea in your head and form your own opinions. Mm -hmm. You're taught like, okay, Here's what you learned today. And essentially, this is what I'm placing this into your head, and we're going to test you on it later. And I'm going to have to, you're going to have to pull it out and put it on this paper. And after that, it's not going to be relevant anymore. Jeez, what did I learn from high school? I went to high school for four years. I would say that other than the books that I read, mm -hmm. um, the only thing that's really stuck with me is something my history teacher told me once, which is that the only thing we can learn from history is that people don't learn from history. Yeah. And that to me summarizes like. Why I didn't give a shit? <laughs> you know, it's kind of kind of interesting because in Russia we also um, our school system works that you you practically wake up at 6 a.m. You always go at seven. I think the first lesson is at seven o'clock a.m. Mm. And well, it's practically the same shit. Yeah, and I just disagree in with the theory behind it because it's like it's training you to work a nine to five job. Yeah, yeah, in like a factory, much. right? Yeah. Which was how, especially in America, like we were an, indus an industrious nation for, for mm -hmm. a long time. But now that we're in this, I don't want to say, it's not a new society, but like it's a new generation. Mm -hmm. and it's a very different world that we live in, in mm -hmm. comparison to our parents and especially our grandparents. Um, like my grandparents' generation, like they came alive in like the, ba the baby boomer generation. Yeah. Where, you know, when you, you come home from the war, you have a house, yeah. a job, the GI Bill gave you an education, and uh, you could stay with a company for 30 years. Yeah. You'd uh, end with a pension, and you could believe in such things like Social Security, which will not exist for mm -hmm. my generation. However, we still pay mm -hmm. taxes mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's this guy, I can't remember, this um, guy named, I think it was Robert Buckminster Fuller, said something along the lines of like, we have to do away with the specious notion that everyone must work for a living, which is not to say, uh, no one should work. The point is simply that as 
technology advances, we're not going to need to do as much work as we did previously in order to sustain ourselves as mm -hmm. like a community in, in a society. Because, like, no lie, you got robots for that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> even even like Amazon warehouses, you know, yeah. they have like their the drones, McDonald's retail stores, like there's self checkouts now. Before those existed, there were people there, and that's going to continue. Yeah. Um, and I think nowadays, if we're going to teach people in school about anything, we should give them almost, uh, like, there's no philosophy in my high school. There was no, there was no financial planning. Mm -hmm. There's no basic like life advice, stuff I had to figure out by myself that would have been really nice for someone to tell me like 13, 14, like, hey, by the way, you know, don't worry so much. Because <laughs> who knows what you're going to do. And, uh, you know, the importance of believing in yourself and also being willing to challenge yourself and constantly understand that you can be better than what you are right now. And that might have been a little jumbled. I'm sure that wasn't as streamlined a bunch of thoughts as it could mm. be, but I'm tired. <laughs> you can imagine how great it was because I've kind of set a trap for you. Mm. I had a question later on, but I'm going to ask it now. Uh, I've noticed you use a lot of quotes from uh, great people. Mm. Uh, where do you pick those quotes from? Um, I like to read a lot, mm -hmm. and I don't know what it is with my memory, but I pick up things I read, like, I don't know how to put it, like, it's the only way I can really memorize things. That's why, like, I know Dota, mm -hmm. right? I can tell you a bunch, of, a bunch of bullshit about Dota. The same way when I was, like, seven, I could tell you a whole bunch of dinosaur facts, okay? <laughs> Deinonychus was my favorite. Um, oh, it's and, pretty common you say. I, I... Yeah, I was going to be a paleontologist, and oh. then I turned eight, and... When my life changed, I got into Play-Doh or something, I don't mm -hmm. know. I read a lot, and I honestly like just scour the internet at mm -hmm. times, you know, just to find like ideas or... I think quotes are really cool because they can summarize, like all the thoughts that I have, mm -hmm. right, or that you have, and you're like, wow, I'm so smart, like I, I, I can look at this and, you know, pick out the deeper mm -hmm. meaning and understand it. Someone else has already done that. Yeah, probably a yeah. hundred years ago, he was way smarter than you, probably more attractive, and he had a, he's just said it better than you, right? Like, mm -hmm. why spoil it, you know? Yeah. And I think that it's not important that, you know, the quotes from a famous person, it's that they're right, mm -hmm. or they have a, a good viewpoint on something. Yeah. And um, poems are good too. Okay, so what's uh, the last book you've read? And do you read philosophy books? I've read a few. I prefer science fiction if I'm uh -huh. gonna just like read casually. Science fiction like like uh, Philip Dick, Isaac Isaac. I read a couple of. I think my favorite is uh, my favorite author is Heinlein. Uh huh. For for, for that, um, Asimov is mm -hmm. incredible. And uh, one of my favorite books that I'd highly recommend if you're viewing this is The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. It's uh -huh. really excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's all like the classics, you know, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Dune. Like I have a vivid imagination, so I, I like much mm -hmm. prefer books to like watching movies. As an example, Harry Potter, the characters were better in my head, with mm -hmm. the exception of Snape, who has replaced oh. what my Snape was in huh. here. What about the science fiction uh, movies? Have you watched, for instance, Blade Runner? Mm -hmm. what, what did you think about it? Because uh, I think you know that uh, the whole movie, the whole um, plot is based on one tiny tale from Philip Dick. Yeah. So what it do you was, think about it? Was, it wasn't a tiny tale. It was when androids dream of electricity. Yeah, sheep. yeah. It was it's a book. A, it was a book. It's not. It's not a big. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the uh, how <coughs> Danny Villeneuve and Ridley Scott made the movies based on this book? I think it was a great idea. You yeah. enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I think. I mean, they made a remake of it too. Yeah, it had to be. I mean, they had Harrison Ford though. To be fair, so they kind of like had a, a so double whammy. Was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, don't know, I liked it. I, I'm not gonna, you know, sing songs about it or praise it for an hour, but it was okay. Good. Okay, that's fine. Let's go back to Dota and yeah, stuff. Of yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> After your kick, um, the last time we've seen you was on deck on uh, the panel. Uh, what were you doing um, else? Why, uh, this whole time, were you playing pubs maybe, or what were you, what were you doing after the kick? Moving. Ordering from Uber Eats, mm -hmm. playing a lot of Dota. Mm -hmm. um, I was like a bit, ups not upset, but kind of disappointed and angry. Mm -hmm. 
and I just started spamming pubs, streaming mm -hmm. a little bit, just to kind of like prove to myself that I wasn't like, I don't want to say, you know, I wasn't the problem, but just, you know, make sure I was good. And uh, I can confirm, I'm really good at Dota. <laughs> I'm really good. Well, and, I have no uh, doubts about that. Yeah, I, especially after uh, seeing how the next month or so played out, mm -hmm. I would say the community could see that as well. Okay, talking about the pubs and your training, You've known to speak about the, uh, the game's problems like uh, throwing toxic players and so on and so forth, and that Valve isn't fixing those things. They're just, they just recently started to ban mm -hmm. cheaters. And for huh. instance, in Overwatch, uh, there is a new feature. You can avoid a player for one week. If you have someone toxic, very toxic, That's and amazing. if you are on high level of MMR, there's not a lot of players up there to, to start with. You can avoid a person for one week, and you can avoid two persons for the week. Why don't you think Valve hasn't done it? And, well, I can understand that you like the idea, and maybe you do have some other ideas how to fix the things in Dota. I mean, I would say, I mean, I c so that's a two-part question. Yeah. I'll answer the real one quickly, which is that I think Valve and all companies such as Valve, whenever you reach like the top of your field in a tech industry, I think Google has the same mm -hmm. issues, no one, people want to do like cool tech shit. Nobody wants to maintain Google Maps mm -hmm. and fix the bugs, yeah. okay? The same way nobody really wants to work on Dota 2 matchmaking, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Uh, it's just not interesting. You know, I'm sure they're making cutting edge VR. Mm -hmm. uh, they're probably building robots. It's like a new game. Mm -hmm. It's the same anywhere when you're at that level. Um, and as for the problem with Dota, I was actually talking with uh, Grand Grant and Breaky about this the other day. The most nostalgic time or game that we have was like the Burning Crusade in World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that was because of the aspect of community. It wasn't like it is now in WoW. Like mm -hmm. I don't play, I, I, I played in high school, you know, like 10 years ago at this point. That's scary, holy shit, 10 mm -hmm. years. Um, you would have to know people and you would make friends and you'd group up with them yeah. to do like arena or battlegrounds or raids and there wasn't this like looking for raid. It's, it's very, um, it's not personal anymore. You're replaceable. You're just a guy now. Mm -hmm. And you fit into a mold and these group of strangers go do some shit together and that's it. Whereas previously it was almost a live version like Dungeons and Dragons, right? And I used to, you had friends mm -hmm. and you would play with them. And it was a communal thing. There was pride for your, for your guild, for your server, for, for yourself as an individual. Whereas, it doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the same in Dota. What, what do you get as a player? What do you actually earn? What do you get? You get skins? You get shards now from Dota Plus, but for yeah. what? For skins. For skins, and so that you can have a, a count for how many like lightning stun combos you have on Lesh. That shit doesn't really matter. You know? Uh, look, at, look at Warcraft 3. Like, you used to, uh, you used to have like tournaments, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you won a certain amount of games in tournaments and free-for-all as a race, you'd get like a, an, a character icon that was unlockable. Like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And there's achievements in a lot of other games. But I swear, I don't understand what people get out of playing Dota casually. I really don't because I don't see what the reward is. It's plus 25 or minus 25. You could play 10 games in a day and you win five, lose five, and you're up one MMR from what you were before. Like, what do you get? There's no resets. You just, you just sit there. Look at pro players. They get to 9K. What do they do? They make another account. What's yeah. the, what, what, do you, what value do you get? It just, it just feels like a time sink. And I think a big part of that is there's the aspects of community have not been developed. Mm -hmm. I mean, custom games are, the, the system is not as it should be. And whenever you, know, you have these top 10 games, and if you're not in a top 10 game, how does your game get play? Whereas Warcraft 3, custom games, there's a list. You're on you know, a phone or mm -hmm. Skype with your friends. You're like, oh, join this one, join this one. Boom, you go, you play it. Like, you had to wait for someone to host maps if you loved them, and there was like a smaller community. Yeah. You know, you'd beat impossible bosses with a group of like randoms, or maybe you'd fail. You'd be like, oh, you come back tomorrow. But I don't know if it's because I was younger and I was truly playing games for fun, but mm -hmm. I just don't see that as, uh, you know, what my, even my little brothers get to enjoy. It just doesn't exist like that mm -hmm. anymore. There's no in-houses in Dota. Um, in Han, we used to play in houses every day. Oh, damn it, guys. Just look at the time. It's already 20 minutes into you. We gotta take a little break. And see you guys tomorrow.